Okay, in this tutorial, um, I'm going to show you how to complete uh, part of your findings. So we're specifically looking at the part of your results or findings which deals with presenting your data. Um, and there are two tutorials here. So this is step one, tutorial one. Um, and tutor tutorial two, I'll show you some more data presentation techniques. And in the final tutorial, uh, we'll be dealing with the analysis part of your findings, which is where you examine data that you've then presented. So uh, you'll need to open the spreadsheet, which I'm showing you in the front uh, of this presentation that's in front of you, um, in order to create the, uh, the graphs that I'm going to be showing you. And in terms of your instructions document, we're dealing with the findings. And in this particular section, I'm going to focus here uh, on this, which is the presentation of graphs. And I'll also talk a little bit about pictures um, or maps or other material that you might want to use and annotations you might want to make to the graphs using the draw function in Google. So that will be part of this presentation as well. OK, so let's go back to the spreadsheet. Um, what we have in this spreadsheet, and you'll notice this has been uh, done for you already, is um, a changing gradient of Tensmere Beach. And that graph um, should show a 500 meter transect. So this is the transect that we covered the majority of. I've used some of the data from previous years just to finish this full transect off. So this takes you uh, from the beginning when we were standing on the beach uh, over the four dune, which is the small little hillocks uh, before you hit the first big dune. And you'll see in the spreadsheet that is actually indicated here as the start of the four dunes. Um, then we've got the big steep yellow dune. That's the first high point, the big sand dune near the near the sea. So you can see that's noted there at uh, location six. So at this point, we are um, 99.84 meters from where we started measuring. And you can see the distance being calculated here through a small little equation that's being done. Um, after we've been up the yellow dune, we've come back down the other side, and that's when you'd have felt the sheltered area from the sea, because the sea's over here with the wind blowing against the dunes. So once you're behind those dunes in this area where the arrow is, you're now in the sheltered area. Um, as we drop down here, we actually get back to sea level. So this area that's at sea level is known as the dune slacks, and you can see uh, the start of the dune slacks at 258 meters from the point we started measuring. And then we've got the end of the dune slacks, and the start of the grey dunes, so these are the very old dunes that were, were yellow dunes um, once upon a time when the sea was in this area. But now, because this is a developing beach growing um, outwards, uh, these are now far from the shoreline. And they're called grey dunes because the sand is actually grey. Um, so here's the start of the grey dunes. And then we get behind the grey dunes into this area, the very back of Tensmuir Beach, there was actually uh, the start of a coniferous forest, which marks the final point where data was gathered which is almost 500 meters from the start point of the measuring. Now I've done that piece of data presentation and you're gonna to want to copy this and bring this in to your findings, um, maybe with a little sentence uh, beforehand that actually introduces what it is showing. What I would also do is once you've copied it into your findings, you might want to copy into the draw function, add an arrow pointing to each of these key points here um, naming what they all are, because uh, these are going to be quite important when it comes to analyzing your pH changes and then trying to also explain why your pH is changing. So we've got the four dunes, the yellow dunes, the dune slacks here, quite a, covering a bit of distance, and the gray dune and the coniferous forest. And you will have been shown in class how to add an annotation with a label. Um, you're also going to be probably drawing some linked arrows between this graph and the one I'm going to ask you to create. So when you do data presentation, you need to be thinking about your research question and that the data presents, uh, the data presentation that you choose presents your data effectively. So this is effectively a what's what's known as a long profile. It looks like a line graph, but it's actually a long profile to change to show you the changing height and gradient of the land as you move from the start point, the sea. Well, this is actually the strand line. You might want to add that as a label in the draw function right through to the back of the beach. OK, now, because we are thinking and our research question is all about how does pH change as you move further away, the very first thing we're going to want to do is, apart from looking at how does the land change as we move away from the shoreline, which is obviously very important to understanding the pH, 
um, we also now got to think about presenting the pH data. So how do you do that in Google Sheets? Well, there's two bits you need to do. You need your X and your Y axis data because we're going to go with a, a line graph to show this. And uh, the, we will, we've got our total horizontal data. So this is our data from the sea, distance from the sea. And we've got our pH data, but they're in separate columns. They're separated by a column. So what you want to do is highlight, drag your mouse down to the bottom of the data that you want to use, like there, and hold down on your keypad the CTRL button, which will allow you to select, including the title, another row, another column, sorry, of data that's not joined. So you see, I've now got two columns that are highlighted but the one in between is not highlighted because I use that CTRL button. Next step I want to do is use the insert chart function and it's pre-selected this for me. I've got this label and this label. Um, I don't want a scatter graph however I want to show this as a line so I'm just going to change. By the way if this chart editor doesn't appear just hit the three little dots here and select edit chart and then select a line graph. So there we go. And we can select different types of line graphs. We can have it uh, as a smoother line graph like that if we want to smooth it out. This title here doesn't really work for me. It doesn't really tell you what that x-axis is. So I'm just going to change it uh, to something that changed the vertical axis. I'm using the customized label. And then I'm selecting, scrolling down, selecting horizontal axis title. And I want to change this um, distance from strand line. Strand line, by the way, is where we start measuring our data. That's where the seaweed piles up at the back of the beach. This is from the strand line um, in meters. Okay. And see, there we go. So we now have from zero all the way to 500, and we can see the pH of the soil. And with that, we don't need to change that label. This title is not very elegant because it's not really telling us what the graph shows. So I'm going to change that as well. So it, we would be um, graph showing now pH changes um, from the strand line to the beach. You think a long time about titles. Um, if you had multiple of these graphs, you'd probably want to think about, um, you know, on transect one, transect two, or you, if you had multiple transects, you might want to put them all on the same graph so you had multiple lines. But we're only dealing with one pH measurement because we've only got one transect. So these titles, you can change the uh, font, you can change the title sizes. If you want, if it's too big, taking up too much space, uh, you can make it bold and so on. Okay, so you can play around with the presentation. Now, now that you've got this graph here, I'm, I'm just going to bring it down and show you a nice little interesting or close chart editor. So you'll need to create this graph and you're going to want to bring it in to your findings. And if you actually stretch it to match the other graph, you can actually, if I just zoom out a little bit to show you this, you can see your two graphs. Ignore this graph down here. That's a very specialized custom graph. I'm just going to delete that for the moment. You can see now you've got your pH changing and our line down here is almost matching the distance. If I just select this again and just reduce it because I want my transect to match, I want that point there to be the 500 meter and the 400 meter and the 300 to be lined up perfectly. So when I'm comparing my distances, not quite of my two graphs, I'm just going to move this one in, they actually line up accurately. So I can see that this area here at the 300 meter i can see what the ph was and that is 300 and i can see the ph doing things and changing along that okay right both of those graphs you can bring them in and you can use the draw function in the google docs to actually kind of uh, use arrows to point out there's the yellow june at 120 meters or so and you can line it up with an arrow a two-headed arrow that points to there and there so in my mind, I'm connecting the data, okay, between these uh, different areas. Right, that's the end of the first tutorial. I would suggest you add some annotations to both of these graphs. Um, certainly this area here, 
I would probably be annotating these three sites because the pH here is uh, higher. It's 7.3, 7.2, 7.2. And why I'd want to annotate that is that's clearly bucking the trend. So the pH is coming down. Um, from here to here, pH is very stable. So you might want to annotate, annotate that uh, stable pH. Okay, here we've got a dramatic drop in the pH. So we might want to add a label here, so sharp drop in the pH. So something happens here that causes the pH to drop quite dramatically. And those are annotations where you add a label and a little description about something that's happening. So when you start to write about how your pH is changing in your uh, analysis, you can make some good observations. Now, one final top tip is if you've brought this and this into your findings, which you should have done, you might, above them both, want to place one of these kind of sand dune profile diagrams. You will have had one of these in your background research. I'm using PFA, PFA level jog.pbworks.com and you'll find it in there. And I just wrote in, I just Google search sand dune profiles because you can see this is the same sand dune profile, but not in a graph form, it's in a diagram form this time. So there's the coniferous forest at the back, the woodland, there's the dune slacks, there's the, this is actually, they call it the embryo dunes. These are the actual yellow dunes. We can see that in the diagram. We can see that the dune slacks are below the water table. Um, down here, if we we, we've got the distances matched up with the pH changes that we'd be expecting on a perfect beach. If we choose to use this one, we've got even more information. I know it's in black and white, um, but we've got other information underneath it about the types of grasses, the amount of calcium carbonate that you'd be expecting to find. Now, that's not something we measured, but calcium carbonate is obviously an alkaline when it decomposes, when that's made from seashells. Um, and that's why we're expecting the more alkaline soils at the beginning. And obviously, as the calcium carbonate decreases as you move further away from the sea, the acidity drops. But is it the question is, is it the is the acidity dropping just because there's this calcium carbonate or is the actual amount of uh, vegetation that's growing and the amount of soil um, and the different types of species also playing a role? So when you watch the second tutorial on data presentation, you're going to want to think about um, that in terms of choosing uh, something that's going to allow you to maybe analyze your results uh, and explain this changing pH in a little bit more detail.